Hi everyone, welcome back to Giovanna Designs. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back and thank you for being here. So uh, tonight we're going to do something that um, I'm really excited about. I really, really, really love, like three reallys, the uh, painting that's behind me, the iridescent blue black from Pabello Studios that as the base color. So I want to do the Pabello Studios iridescent blue green, one of my favorite colors ever. And I think as a background, it's just gonna be really, really cool. So we're gonna do a series of these. Yeah, I think we're gonna do a series of these. This is gonna be fun because I love the way that they, the effect that they give. They just, it's very, I'll give you a close up of this outside because I also want you to see it in the resin. It just came out so beautiful. But the background has its own movement to it. It has its own life to it, which is just really, really cool for a background in general. So, okay, let's get straight to the colors. So in my little mixy cups, because I don't have them in bottles yet, um, I have Pabello Studios Pins Gray and Windsor & Noon Galleria Cobalt Blue Hue. So in addition to those, we are gonna do Pabello Studios Iridescent Green Yellow, love that color, Amsterdam Sky Blue, I'm doing Arteza Pearl Space Gray for some depth, the Amsterdam Greenish Blue, which is a really cool color, and I made my own custom silver. I had a um, Arteza Silver, and it just was really light, and so I added in, and this is gonna be super sparkly, I'm excited about this one. I added in, um, so I didn't, because I didn't have any left, <laughs> I added in what they call Cold Gray from Arteza, as well as the Iridescent Medium. Uh, let me show you that one. It's the Artist Loft Iridescent Medium. This stuff is really cool. It adds just, it makes any paint a metallic. So, uh, but this one's super, I add a lot. So <laughs> it's gonna be super sparkly. So, okay, that's about it. Let's get going. Okay, so I tried to get a shot of this where you don't see my reflection in it. Because if I do this, you completely see me and the camera. So I'm almost angling up. If you can tell, and that's just because the resin is so beautifully reflective. Excuse the cars in the background, please. So I'm going to bring you in just so you can see this color. And you are going to see a little bit of my reflection, but I'm going to angle up. So you try to avoid that as much as possible. But look at how beautiful this came out. That's that bubbly corner I was talking about that came out sort of like bubbles. So, so pretty. And even the iridescent blue-black, you see how it's got that sort of wave effect in it? It just has so much movement. This whole piece just has so much movement. And the color pop in the middle is just absolutely gorgeous. But you see that? Even the negative space has a lot of movement to it. It's just really, really cool. Ah, this is one of my favorites, I have to say. And that's what's prompted me to do it again. So this time we're doing it with my favorite color in the background. This one is still available for purchase. It was purchased and then that fell through. So it is back available again. And if you're interested, please email me. I will put the email down at the bottom. Okay, let's get going on today's painting. Okay, as always, we start with the hair up, camera down, canvas prepped and ready to go. We make sure that we are level for sure. Gotta make sure that you're level always, every single time. And then the bottom is taped and I have my screws in place to get it up off the table. Why do I use screws? I've had a few people ask me that. Um, these screws are easier to adjust. So if you have the pins in each corner, that's fine. But then when you, if it's your canvas is not perfectly level, you have to pull one out or push one in one way or further. My fingers don't work that well. I have joint issues. And so it's easier for me to just tweak it by screwing one screw a little tighter, one screw a little looser in each corner until it's perfectly level and ready to go. Okay, so let's start with the base coat. This is just, I'm excited about this. I really am, it's so beautiful. And we're working with a black 16 by 20 inch canvas. It's an Arteza. Look at just, that's so pretty just like that. <laughs> this color is just gorgeous. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let's make 
sure our edges and corners are all covered. This is a traditional profile canvas, so that's three quarters of an inch thick. I like these on the black canvas because they have a oop. <laughs> shirt in the paint. See, it's every time some paint gets on me at some point. <laughs> so that was what I was saying. Um, I like these thinner canvases for this method um, with the iridescence. And I like the black canvases because I feel like the iridescence are, and I'm gonna put more paint over here now. The iridescence are a bit translucent. They can be. Um, and so the black underneath, it just gives this reflective quality to it that works really well with the iridescence. Okay, just like this, I really hope you can see it. Do you see how much life this has? Just starting off, just the way it is. That's that iridescent quality. It's just really, really cool. All right, let me pop some bubbles that I see happening. Although I almost feel like I'd like to leave them just for the effect of it, but I know they're a little dry funky, so don't want that. I gotta pop them all now. And there are quite a few of them. Okay, let's start off with the uh, Artezas Pearl Space Gray. I'm gonna go up and over. So how do I wanna do this? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, ready? And then over that way. Yeah, I like that, okay. I may go up that way too when I flare it, but we'll see. Okay, this is that um, Galleria. Cobalt blue hue, I call it. Oh, this is pretty. This is my first time using this one. I like it. It's a very vibrant blue. Okay, now we've got the Amsterdam greenish blue. Nice deep color. Amsterdam sky blue light. Actually, I didn't say that before. Sky blue light. This is going to bring a lot of brightness to it. You know what I forgot? I wanted to throw a little white in there too. Where's my white? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to put down my Payne's Gray first and then I'm going to throw that white in there. Because these are a lot of really deep, rich colors and I don't want it to get too dark. I'm going to bring a little bit of highlights in there. All right, so let's just drizzle some white in there right on top. There we go. I'll add some cool little highlights here and there. Okay, so now we're going Pebeo, I always mess that up. Pebeo iridescent green yellow. A lot of that. And my funky silver. This is gonna be so pretty. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, let's pour my color on both sides. I want to make sure I have enough that to flow. Okay, I think that's great. All right, pop bubbles one more time. And we will be ready to go. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna go up this way and flare that way. Okay, and then back down that way after. I don't think I'm gonna go yeah, I don't want to go completely up. Okay. Oh wow, this is really pretty. Okay, what I learned from last time, too, is to keep going on your edges all the way out because it adds a really cool flare to your colors. Yeah, I think I want to go that way, too. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so pretty. Wow. Oh, I love this iridescent effect. The, the iridescent as a background just gives the coolest effect. Where in some other backgrounds, you know, it might look overblown. This looks like it's awesome. You have that extra color there. It's just really cool. Okay. What am I going to do with this now? Where am I blown? I don't, I don't want to do very much with it at all. Honestly. All right, let's go. This little area here can be changed. So that, that carries down further. We got a little white guy over here. We're gonna get rid of you. A little white spot. We don't need a little white spot there. Okay. Just wanna finish it out because where, I, where the hairdryer stopped, that, like right there, that color stops. I want that to continue all the way here too. There we go, okay. Hmm, that one's perfect. This is a little odd. Let's get rid of that, there we go. That's perfect. Oh, this is so cool. I can't wait until you see the close-up. This is the coolest thing. I loved the other one, but I love this one more because it's my color. I really do. It's so beautiful. Okay. Let's study this and see. Do I want to blast this a little bit with some heat? heat. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, I think I'm going to just a little bit. See something. I see something. I see a party crasher. You get out. Something in my paint. There we go. Goodbye. You're done. And then there was a little white spot over here that needs to go. A little fuzzy. No, thank you. No, thank you. You are not invited to the party. All right, let's see what would happen if I put a little bit of heat right on those areas. Oh, this is so cool. I love it. I'm done. I'm done. That's it. Yes. This is gorgeous. This is exactly what I wanted. Oh, this is so, so pretty. Okay. I'm going to take you down from the clamp now and show you all the beautiful little details in this. You're going to love it. Okay. Please excuse the ring light reflection in the corner, but oh my gosh, is this not the most beautiful thing ever? I'm so in love with this. It came out gorgeous. Okay. Let me bring you in and show you all the details and what I'm talking about with the movement. Uh, okay, look at that background. That's just the iridescent green blue. Isn't that gorgeous? Just the background itself. And then you come over here. Sorry, I went a little too fast on that one. And you see this corner? This is what I meant about the blown out areas where sometimes in a regular pour that can look a little not muddy, but just blown out, overblown. And you know, and then you have the punchy center and you scrape this because it's just too overblown. But in this style, it really works, right? It really looks so pretty. So there's that blue. You see the reflection of the silver? <laughs> that silver in there really came out very, very sparkly, which is really pretty. And then I got my teeny tiny little cell families. And look at that cool, cool bubble effect. Isn't that awesome? There again, teeny tiny little cell families, just hanging out. <laughs>
but I've got them all over. I've got these little bubbles everywhere and from the green blue popping through the colors, oh, it's just so watery and beautiful. There, like that. You see that? Isn't that gorgeous? Love, love, love it. And then there's the softer edges all the way, sorry about the ring light, <laughs> all the way into that corner. You get that softer blown out edge and then bam, the striped area. Adds a nice punch of color in there. Ugh, oh, I'm so in love with this one. I try to end up with a painting that I like every time, but this one I really love. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to work at a painting for a long time to say, okay, I'm done, I love it. But this one is like, woof, immediately. I'm gonna do more of these. The next one, <laughs> the next one is gonna be this guy. Yeah, we're gonna do green blue as a background. Not green blue, what am I saying? Green yellow. That's gonna be really cool and really, really pretty. Okay, so. There we have it. This was not a commission. So if you're interested in this piece, please email me at giovannadesigns at gmail.com. And I hope you like this video enough to subscribe if you're just new to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I really had a great time tonight. I hope you enjoyed yourself watching me. Have a great night. Bye-bye.